Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Well, what are you looking at? This is a homemade cow simulator. It's my short track one. Uh, and we're gonna use it briefly today. It's about to start raining, but we're just warming Eve up. Eve is uh, my eldest Morgan mare, and she has a side saddle on because we're trying to learn things that we can do comfortably in a side saddle. Now, uh, Sarah is riding Eve right now. I am dressed and ready to get up there if I need to because Sarah uh, has limited experience in side saddle and even less experience in cow work. So I'm going to get up there if uh, I need to, but we're doing something very slow today. That's beautiful, Sarah. Yes, look. See, she's looking over her shoulder when she wants to turn Eve. A, a few steps back, perfect. After we're done here, even if it starts raining, we're going to let Sarah go in and watch a half hour show by Ken McNabb that would broadcast it on RFD TV that is all about sorting cattle and using a cow simulator to help the horse learn to work over its haunches like Eve is doing. Very nice, Sarah. It may be that I don't have to get on. Now, the only thing that you're doing a little bit wrong right now is you're a little close to the cow. The closer you get to the cow, there's kind of an optimal distance, the more likely you're gonna lose it if it does some fancy footwork. So we like to stay about eight foot away, which uh, my fence rails are about eight foot. So one post away. Good, and we're using our body language. We're using our voice. We do have an O-ring snaffle on. We have the Alreguzine double reins in case Eve gets stressed. So far, she's looking just beautiful. She's looking relaxed. Sarah's doing a great job riding in the side saddle. Yes, and working over her haunches. Good. We've been doing some Western dressage work with my mares. So, but, uh, you know, we, we know how important it is to be able to get them to move their front end and their hind end and move in a, a leg yielding path. And we're even trying to work on a half pass, but that's real hard. You can watch some of, some of my older shows about it. Okay, so Sarah is a great rider. Uh, and we're going to do everything slowly today. We're going to tell you what we're doing. And just before we close the camera, Sarah is going to take Eve over a white, homemade white PVC jump that um, I built here using umbrella stamps from CVS Pharmacy or Longs at that time it was called, just to uh, see if we can get Eve to do some jumping in side saddle. We did a little bit in a recent prior show about obstacle work using a wooden crossbar jump. Two of them as a matter of fact, but we said, I think we want to work here in the arena, in the sanded arena, uh, and get really uh, more comfortable uh, in a side saddle jumping. All my horses have done jumping in the past and Sarah has done a lot of it, but according to what Sarah has studied on, mostly YouTube videos, I think, uh, even uh, even uh, an experienced stride jumper could have trouble uh, understanding the best body position and so forth in a side saddle. But if you go to YouTube, you will see that there are some unbelievable uh, side saddle jumpers going five feet in the air. Uh, so we're never going to get there, we know. But uh, today we're going to do a little bit of simulated cow work. And I'm doing the camera because there's only a two-man team today, Sarah and me. And uh, then we'll do just a little bit of jumping on that homemade crossbar, or not crossbar, but a PVC jump. And we'll go in and watch Ken McNabb. Uh, so that Sarah knows uh, what we're going to want to do to get ready for cattle sorting, which we'd like to do next spring if we can just find it here in or near Santa Cruz County. Okay, Sarah, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm operating the camera too, so it's not going to be easy to do both, but I'm going to leave the 
cloth cow uh, about in the middle like you see it. Okay. And then um, this uh, unicycle has pedals and I'm going to use my hands to move it back and forth to the south end and back to the middle. Okay. And uh, you're doing side saddle simulated cow work. And as you have uh, questions, uh, make note of them because uh, we're going to do an interview of you um, in a few minutes after we've done a little bit of it. Now, Eve is watching. She knows that that cloth cow is going to move. And she kind of knows it's her job to stay with it. And we want to stay out of her way if she's doing it, but be there with a pressure tool on your right, which is a dressage whip, a pressure tool on your left, which is a leg, and it reigns only if necessary. A lot of body language, a lot of voice cues. Okay, and the double range, you see how uh, we just got Eve's head down? Okay, I'm going to bend down and I'm gonna keep the camera on you and um, I'm gonna move this simulated cow. Her head came up a little bit. She's a little bit stressed. I'm actually going to see if I can use my legs. It was designed to be pedaled with legs and I'll try to operate this camera as best I can. I am going to be getting a better tripod because I did get a, an email yesterday from somebody who does community TV work who says he watches my shows all the time but he said he thinks that my tripod needs to be smoother. Uh, so I'll be looking for a better tripod. Okay, now I'm going to try to get in view. Come a little closer, Sarah, uh, so that I can try to get the you and the cloth cow. Okay, and now I'm going to sit down at my unicycle. And I'm going to move the cloth cow. Okay, now she got hard in her mouth. And you'll see that Ken McNabb has comments about that. Good, good. Step back. Always step a foot back when you're ready to go and when you stop. And this is a, a training device. So I saw Sarah was having a little bit of trouble, so I stopped the cow. Of course, if you're doing a real cow, which we hope to do very soon with our mini cows, you don't have this luxury. Coming back. Try not to step in the easterly direction at all. You need to be parallel. You just stepped like a step in the easterly direction and that's gonna lead to leaking. Nice, 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 beautiful haunches work. Step back. You're gonna have to use your Pressure on the right? Yeah, okay, she didn't understand. Or we'll discuss that, what was happening just then. There you go, your leg on the left is the pressure you're using there. I'm coming back this way. Ah, oh, but you see you step forward. Yeah. Can't do that. Okay. We just stop the simulated cow and you get back into haunches work 180 degrees. That's kind of like the fundamentals. Okay. That is the Foundation. Coming back this way. You, you came a little bit forward again. Okay. Go head on head. Okay. Stop. Step back. All the way around. All the way around. Don't don't let her leak. You see, she stepped forward. That's going to be the hardest first step to getting proper in this cow work simulated exercise. Good. And you're probably out of camera's view, but you know, you have to get out of the situation. If there's stress, no focus. Okay. Okay. When I see you, I'd like you to face Eve South. Okay. 
So you got to get her haunches over. And I'd like you to come a little closer. Like, do you see that K marker there? Yes. Okay. Let's uh, try to stay in that line. Okay, you're facing north, but that's okay too. So you're going to go forward. Then I'm going to stop halfway. And if you can get a 180 degree turn and go with it, with the simulated cow southward, then I'd say we've reached a moment of resolution. Okay. We're doing a lot of new things here, a lot of review, and we're aiming towards doing this with fast moving mini cows too. Okay, you got to get her head down. She's stressed. Okay, and now I'm going to come this way, which is northward. Head's coming up a little bit. I'm stopping because she's stopping. You're trying to keep her going? Let's hear a cluck, a click, something, something to make her realize we want forward motion. Can you come a little more forward? Okay, and then stop when you're ready. Try to get her to stand and stop. You know, that's not always so easy. Okay, she's looking at that cloth cow. She's saying, is it going to move? I'm going to move. Try to get all the way around 180 degrees. Okay. Nice. Nice. A couple steps forward. We, we can't have frozen feet. Good. Now let's see if she'll stand for you. Did you ask for that or did she do it? It's kind of a combination. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get back in position which means head on head with the cow and get yourself in the K line. So you stay in camera's view. You know what, Sarah, walk out, get her focus. Focus is so important because if she's right brained and stressed, she's not going to do the job. And remember, Sarah's in a side saddle. It's kind of tricky. As a matter of fact, I haven't found one video yet about side saddle cow work. She's doing serpentines very good. That's real good to get focus. Real good. She, oh, she's looking much more relaxed. Line up when you're ready in the K line. A little closer just so that the camera can get a little bit uh, view of this cloth cow. Good. Now, I'm going to ask you to, when you step back one step, I'm going to move the cow very slowly toward me. Okay. Go for it. All the way around. Good. Now stop her because she's in front of the cow. So she has to understand eventually that she needs to move as fast or as slow as she needs to move in order to stay with the cow. Now let's try to go southward again with the same objective. All the way, all the way around and the K line. Come back in the middle. Yes, <laughs> okay, let's stop. Yeah, she's still kind of relaxed, but concerned. She doesn't know what is the right answer. Come on up here. Let's talk about what's hard. She said it's hard because she doesn't have a leg pressure. So, okay, we'll work on that. But okay. any other observations? Um, because well, normally when I'm asking them to turn over their haunches, I shift my weight a certain way and look. And yes. Kind of, like lay my leg against them, and I don't have that leg. So I'm like trying to figure out what to do with this. And yes, like, and she's trying to understand what you're doing right. with that. And it's harder to shift this way because then I feel like I'm going to topple Yes, over. okay. We may decide the side saddle is not a good way to do cow work, but you know what? My, my uh, left hip replacement is doing just fine and I'm okay on the stride saddle, but if this is the only way I can do it eventually as I get older. Mm -hmm. I'm 68 right now. I'll do it in side saddle as best I can. All right, let's just finish up with step over that jump inside saddle with Firecrest Easter Eve. It's on its lowest rung. 
And if you want to trot, you can, but if, I, I think it's low enough you could just walk over it. Okay, she's saying that if she were trotting, she'd be more inclined to be able to stay in the saddle. So, okay, Sarah is the jumping expert here. And I've learned a little bit about jumping last year before my hip went bad. And I'm going to continue to learn. Nice. Now she did this, Sarah did this in the obstacles area over the crossbar jumps and the ground you know, was typical trail type of ground, leaves and branches and so forth. And I said, let's do it in the arena for a while. One more time. But get Eve's focus. We're asking a lot of Eve today because I'm sure the side saddle and a person in the side saddle feels very different to her. Uh, see, she's getting stressed. She's looking better. She's looking great, actually. Every morning we bring the horses out here and lunge them, free lunge them a little bit over things like this jump. So it's not the jump that is scaring her. It's, you know, having a rider, having a side saddle on. Watch, Sarah. Beautiful. Beautiful. But let's get Eva head down again, bring her to the camera. And we're going to do a little more of that later on, maybe next spring. We want to concentrate right now on cow work before it gets too wet out here. We can even do some jumping in our covered square pen, which we may do when it gets very wet. This is uh, almost Thanksgiving, so we're having a late start. Nice, Sarah. Nice. You're doing so nice, Sarah. Can you come up here? I have to tell you, you're doing so nice that I don't feel it's necessary for me to get up on her. I couldn't do any better right now. She yeah, just needs repetition. Just we haven't ridden her in like That's right. We haven't ridden in about a week because we were short-staffed. So, okay. Any other comments? How about how did it feel on the jump? Did you feel solid? Yes. This time, instead of trying to come up out of the saddle like you would do normally if you were sitting astride, when I was watching the side saddle jumpers, they more kind of just like gripped the saddle and kind of sat down low. Yes. And kind of gave with their hands. So I think that's kind of how you jump that way. Oh, why? Wonderful observation. Yeah. And as we do repetition, we'll decide, yes, that's right. We just have to get better at it. Or no, there must be another trick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a math tutor, by the way, and I always tell my, my students they need to learn the tricks. There's a lot of tricks in math. And once they learn the tricks, they'll be able to go on to the next step. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all for today. Sonia Sokolow, the Urban Cowgirl, and thank you very much, Sarah, and Firecrust Easter Eve. Some more preparation for cow work before we bring the mini zebus in. Today we have my McClellan saddle on. This is an original tree from Civil War days. It's got really nice ties. It's got a place where I can push against in the front rather than a horn, a place if I need that to step, keep my body in the correct position. And it's got a deep seat if you're out on a trail. So we're just going to be doing this kind of cow work prep in all different kinds of saddles, including, of course, a western saddle. I've got my cutting reins on that are inexpensive. They're nylon, but they've got flappers on the end that make them heavy. So if I drop the rein, gravity's going to help the rein stay out of the way. And uh, I'm going to learn to, uh, to work with my simulated moving objects uh, without reins. Uh, so uh, I do have my uh, double reins on though in case Eve starts getting upset. And these, yeah, will help me to give vertical flexion, but if I don't need them, they sit on her neck and they're out of their way. I've got the side pull on today, no bit in her mouth, just a, a lariat over her nose, a lariat nose band. Okay, and we're working both my cutting machines today, and I have many shows about how we've built them and how we use them. Just to show you now how this is going to come together for practice. Back, back. Okay, can you move the doll? Tim. I'm trying to keep Eve from leaking in. Go all the way around. Okay, let's go down. I want Eve to lock off. Stop. Woo. Back. I'll teach you. 
teacher, with repetition and these cow simulators, no matter what tack, no matter what saddle I use, I'll teach her. And now we're going to pick it up with the other cutting machine without her leaking. the side saddle. We really want to give Eve and Sarah and me, that's why I'm prepared to ride if uh, it seems appropriate for me to get in the saddle, um, practice in working a simulated cow. Uh, it's a really different experience to do it in side saddle. So I'm operating the simulated cow which is along my south fence. Sarah is ready to go with Eve and this time she has a Pirelli rope halter on, and we are using a crop rather, rather than a dressage whip because the little flapper at the end of the crop makes a noise and it gives us a little bit clearer signal on the uh, right side, which is kind of the hard side to get used to, both for Eve and the rider, uh, as far as leg pressure because there are no syrups over there. So we're turning you now to Sarah. And then I'm going to start moving the moving object all the way around, all the way. You walk forward again, Sarah. You've got to wait until she's all the way around. That's kind of fundamental. Okay, now I'm going to come back and get her all the way around. Use your crop if you need to. Look, look over there. Look, yes, as soon as you look, she feels you're looking beautiful. All right, I'm going back. I'm going to try to go a little farther. Look, 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 all the way. Good, and move faster, yes. Now, will she stop, and if she doesn't, yes. Okay, all right, she's a little bit concerned. No, she stopped. I was afraid she'd continue to dance around. She didn't. Look where you want to go. Misunderstanding, okay, we're not gonna move the simulated cow. Yes, that crop is giving her the message we want. Now look to your left. Look at her hip, her left hip, when you wanna move around her haunches. Yes, yes, good. Did she stop herself? Yes. She did, <laughs> we're making progress. Okay, we're just gonna do this for a few minutes. She's looking, she's watching my little doll move. Back, back. Good, and I waited until, yes, I was waited until I saw focus and relaxation, stress-free response from Eve. Looks like she stopped. Okay, now she's anticipating, so no, we'll wait. Again, this is a training tool, we'll just wait. When you're ready, a step back, look, yes. Yes, she's getting enthusiastic. Yes, and I stopped short on purpose. 
And you, I heard you say ho. Do you think she would have stopped if you hadn't? No. No, it's okay though. We'll use the verbal cues. Back, back. Again, she's concerned, okay. All the way around, good, you're going parallel now. Remember to look when you want to move her hip over. Look to your left. Yes, okay, she gets, she's stressed right now. Yes, standing still sometimes is really hard, but very important, and you want to go a little closer. We want to be within about eight feet or so of the moving object when we're training on these simulated cow machines. Good. Let's just wait, and when you're ready, I'll know because you'll step back. And if she starts turning, I'll go with her. You guys look at that little hop. That's enthusiasm. Good, and her head's not going up. All the way around, very good. If you can come back without mishap, without the wrong answer, we'll quit. Now she's looking the wrong place, good, good. I'm gonna come all the way back here. Let's see if she stops. You still had to lean back a little bit. You still had to say ho very lightly. That's okay. She's in training. Uh, do you have anything that you want to add? I think she's much better today than I she was. I think she's doing great. I'm really happy that she's responding to the leg, to the pressure of the crop as leg pressure. Yes. The, okay. The pressure of the riding crop with the leather end point to it. So Thank if you. there's somebody here that doesn't know what a crop is versus a dressage whip, yeah. And and the sound of it, did you use it as a, a stimulus? No, I use it just more as a tool. Just a touch tool. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then come a little closer so that people who have never seen a Pirelli rope halter can see it. You see that little knot under the rope halter gives you a little bit more control, kind of like a hackmore. And yet... It, the halter has attached to it some yacht rope reins and a yacht rope Makati rein, which you can just store anywhere. I've seen people store them in their belt loops. Uh, Sarah, you stored it on the saddle itself, mm -hmm. right? Okay. On the breast collar. On the breast collar. Okay. I think that this is perfect for Eve. She threw up her head a little bit but she didn't seem stressed. We don't even need the cycle. Mm -hmm. We don't need that lariat across the nose. We just need a little bit of pressure. Give Eve the benefit of understanding what is our request. That's all for today. Sonia Soklo, The Urban Cowgirl. See more at www.urbancowgirlchannel.com.